So, a little ballistics talk today. Um, there's a lot of hype about this new 65300 Weatherby. And I'm going to compare it. I'm going to try and duplicate that load with a 300 Weatherby. All right. This is claimed to be the flattest shooting to a thousand yards hunted, hunting caliber out there right now. I'm pretty sure they're using the 127LRX bullet in that load. So let's look at what we have here. So this is Barnes data. Um, you get four powders available, and you have the highest one at 3435. The next two drop off over 200 feet per second at 32 and change, and then this H1000 is almost 33, but still you're losing about 150 uh, feet per second with that and 200 with these. So the problem right now, and with all new calibers, is the data information. You know, like you don't have a lot of powders available, and it's really hard to find stuff right now. Um, so that makes it even worse. But, uh, you know, I thought this would be about 3,600 feet per second, 3,500 feet per second. And, you know, maybe Weatherby is loading it up that hot. But for the reloader and the person that wants to, you know, uh, make their own ammo, um, this is the information they have to go by. So who who knows if that data does become available down the road and maybe you get 3550 or 3600 feet per second, which I think is where it should be. Um, anyways, we'll, we'll run with that number and uh, we'll give it the best comparison here with a BC of 0 .468 and 3435. And let's look at the 300 Weatherby. I'm going to pick the Barnes tipped triple shock 150 at a BC of 0 .42. So I'm I'm losing a little bit of BC, but look at all these powder options, and you have uh, the best one here is 3543, which is about 100 feet per second faster. So you have a little bit less BC, uh, but 100 more feet per second. So what's that going to do out to 1,000 yards? Well, let's take a look. So here is the 65300 with the Barnes LRX at 3440, and you get uh, 198 six inches of drop, almost 199. Um, MOA is uh, 19 drop, and windage is 6.1, velocity is 1736, and energy of 850 pounds of energy. So that's the flattest shooting hunting around available right now, so they say. We'll see. Um, so here's the 300 Weatherby with the 150 Barnes tip triple shock. Uh, this is, oh wow. 201 inches, that's a whole two inches more than the 6.5. Shocked? I was. Uh, is the animal going to notice that? No. Um, is a target? No, I doubt anybody can even shoot a two inch group at that range. Um, so, yeah, anyways, uh, MOA is 19.2. Uh, the windage is definitely going to be a little more, 6.8, and that's due to the ballistic coefficient. The velocity of 16.46. Uh, and an energy of 903. So you're getting a little more energy with 903, and you're getting a little less velocity because of that BC. Uh, the more efficient bullet's going to retain that velocity better. Um, but if we're talking about, you know, hunting and the flattest shooting hunting round out there, you, you, I can come within two inches with a 300 Magnum. Um, but therein lies the problem. See, a 6.5 is kind of a one-trick pony, because if you're going to drive a Barnes bullet at 34, 3,500 feet per second, this is what you're going to get. So these are my bullets from the ballistic milk jug test that I did prior a few days ago. This is the 130, this is the 150, this is the uh, 175. These are all max loads shot at 40 yards, point-blank range in the water. Now bear in mind that water is more dense than flesh, so this expansion is going to be more than what you're going to get out of, say, uh, tissue. Uh, you know, density of tissue is 90%, water is 100%. So you should get less expansion, um, and these bullets would probably hold up a little bit better. And this is literally point blank, it's about 40 yards, so it's about the closest you're probably ever going to shoot these bullets at. Um, in my opinion, the Barnes bullets are a pretty good hunting bullet. Um, as far as stuff you're going to find on the shelf, I think those are the better option than, say, a partition, just because I don't want lead in my animal. Uh, so, that being said, you know, I have a bunch of options here, 
and, and there's a couple more that I saw today, the 168 regular uh, TSX bullet uh, for the 300, whereas the 6.5, you're going to have to find this, and the 6.5 is really popular right now, and a lot of people are trying trying to find this uh, 127 LRX. Now, you could shoot a 143 ELDX, but you better be shooting long range, because this is 2,700 feet per second, and this thing only r retains 60% uh, weight um, at that speed, so 2,700 feet per second out of that 6.5 Weatherby is going to be, you know, 500 yards, give or take, I don't know. But that's about what this impact was here. I did a reduced load. This is a 200 grain ELDX, 30 cal, and that's about 60% weight retention there, simulating about a four or 500 yard impact. So what that tells me is that's about the bare minimum I want to be shooting this round at. What happens if an animal stop, you know, comes out at 100 or 200 yards? Do I got to walk back two, 300 yards so I can use this bullet on it so it doesn't turn into a varmint bullet and explode and shallow penetrate and blow off a, a front shoulder or, you know, damage too much meat? Eh, I don't know. Um, in, in my mind, the ELDXs are, are the long-range bullets, you know, the long-range hunting bullets, the guys that have, you know, tuned guns, shooting tight groups, and hunting the canyons over in Idaho, shooting long-range 1,000 yards, you know, they work for that. That's where they're designed to work, long-range hunting match-ish bullet doesn't happen that often. 99% of people are probably going to be looking more for something like a Barnes bullet, a partition, or an Acubond. Um, and that being the fact here, this is a 180 Acubond compared to the 150 Barnes tipped triple shock. It's almost the same size. You know, that lead is heavier, denser than the copper, so the copper bullet's going to be longer. So you're going to have that more streamlined profile, and it's going to act like a 180 grain bullet, especially if it retains 100%. Right here, this skirt popped off, which in an animal it probably won't, but this one, um, if it if it retained it, you know, that's 100% weight uh, retention, and this Acubon's going to look more like this at close range. It's going to be better than that, but um, not by much. You know, what do you get, 65, 70% weight retention? Whereas this bullet, if I would have hit tissue instead of water, probably would have been completely intact. And so you don't have all that lead in your meat, you don't have all that extra shock damage to your meat, all that bloodshot meat, a uh, bullet that retains together like this and penetrates deep and punches two holes, gives you an excellent blood trail, it's a better hunting bullet. And that's that's what we're looking at here is hunting bullets. That's the whole point of the, the flattest shooting hunting bullet. Well, then you got to use this. But that's the only option available in that caliber uh, or that you're probably even going to find and you're going to have a hard time finding it, whereas I found all these for the 300. And this one matches the flattest shooting cartridge out to 1,000 yards within 2 inches. Or basically identical. You know, nearly identical. Um, so, yeah, things to consider. Now, I've gotten these to shoot about 3 quarter inch groups as well as these uh, with the powders I have been able to find. So, I want to do that a couple more times just to verify that they're shooting tight groups like that. And then I'll continue, maybe I'll load up a few of them. If I have to, I would not hesitate to take any animal with this bullet, even though it looks like this. Uh, that's going to perform like that uh, RIP round, where that pistol ammunition, where you get that violent expansion and the pedals rip off and kind of do your, your cone shape with your core penetrating through. And the reason why I say 60% minimum, well, these two cores, even if this does rip off in the animal, and this, you know, that sheds its petals and they go off into the four petals like that. This and this core are 60% weight retention, much like this, you know. But I would rather be picking these chunks out of, of the animal than all those little lead fragments going into your grind and, and your stakes and stuff like that if you make an improper shot. Um, it's going to penetrate mm, most of the time better than a, a jacketed bullet. Now, that's similar to like a partition. You know, the partition is going to penetrate like that, but they're not going to have the BCs of that. So then the trade off is you're getting your chuck and lead into the animal too. So, again, um, back to the point the the longest, flattest shooting around here, um, I can duplicate it here. And if not, then I got a couple options. So, interesting things to consider. 
we've got a lot of choices now uh, these days. We have the 6.8 Western, which is really cool around. The 6.5 PRC, I had one for a moment. I, I might get another one. Who knows? I'm kind of leaning into the 6.8 Western. I kind of like that one. But for now, I'm going to tune a load for this 300. And hopefully, ideally, I want to find this load to shoot. And the reason being is because all the hype about that 6.5 and how flat it shoots. And I think that'd be pretty cool if I can get this to get, you know, half to three quarter MOA load, and I'll get there eventually, find the powder it likes, or the tune the load up a little bit, and then have essentially that performance of that 6.5, 300, in my 300. And then I have the option to shoot other things too if I wanted to. So, yeah, anyways, um, you guys tell me what you think. 6.5? Get one anyway? No, no not, not right now. Down the road maybe, yeah. Um, but something to consider. I've never thought that the 300 Rutherby would ballistically keep up with a 6.5 300 Weatherby. But it does within two inches. That's about the length of this bullet at a thousand yards. Pretty impressive. So, yeah, run the numbers yourself, guys. You know, like come on here to um, this uh, ballistic calculator. This is. JBM Ballistics, click this little ballistic link right here, and you go to trajectory right here, and you can plug in your data. Plug in your ballistic coefficient, plug in your bullet weight, your caliber, your velocity, um, your zero range, your maximum range, your range increments, whatever you want to do, your altitude, pressure, all that stuff. You can calculate it in MOA or mil, if you got a mil reticle, which I used to do that a lot, and hit calculate, and It'll spit out your data, and there you go. There's your your drop chart. If you're if you're doing wind it or if you're doing M MOA drop right here, here's a drop chart for you. You can match up to your reticle, and then you know your energies. You know if a bullet requires a certain speed, your manufacturer says it. You know it's got to be going more than 2,000 feet per second. Then 800 yards is your limit with this load. You know or whatever you're looking at. Um, but yeah, run the data yourself. Check it out. You know don't don't trust the manufacturers or they're kind of shady sometimes. But uh, anyways, talk to you guys later.